How's it going, Smashers? My name is Bonk, and in this video, I'm gonna run you through some of the biggest upsets in Smash Ultimate's history. There are plenty of them, but we've chosen the ones we think are the most notable. Honestly, these sets feature a solid mix of incredible gameplay, as well as the foundation of some incredible memes. Oh, and also, if you're looking to level up your own foundation, make sure to check out ProGuides.com, where we have plenty of coaches, as well as courses by pro players, to help you get good. Of course, what's an upset video without Smash's final boss, MKLeo? We're going to throw it back before lockdown at Frostbite 2020. If you haven't seen this match, well, you can probably already guess how it went because of the video's title. We've got MKLeo, the best player in the world on his notorious Joker. Challenging him was a 15-year prodigy who now goes by the tag Kurama, playing Mario. Let's break down this set. Headed into Game 1, Kurama immediately sets the tone of the set. He doesn't care that his opponent is MKLeo. After getting pushed to the ledge, his first getup option is an aggressive one, choosing to drop from it and recover with a double jump down air. This already puts him in a great spot to begin frame trapping Leo's Joker. With PS2's double plat setup and the two player stage positioning, this leads to a series of confirms ending with a tech chase into grab. The string finally ends when Leo breaks the combo with a counter, but the damage is done and he's taken 90% from that aggressive getup. Kurama proceeds to play out neutral, and after several exchanges, Arsene times out. Eventually, he makes a great down air catch on Joker trying to hit him from above with Gun to secure the first stock of Game 1. Leo quickly follows up and manages to take a stock of his own with minimal damage. Both on their second stock, Kurama shield grabs Leo out of Gun and demonstrates Mario's disgusting combo game once again, racking up some nasty damage. Kurama ends Leo's second stock by punishing a whiffed forward smash with a back throw. It's at this point that MKLeo starts getting antsy. He really wants to take this stock to even the game out. He manages to push Kurama off stage a couple of times, choosing to stay on stage and go for a ledge trap instead of going out for an edge guard. This gets close to leading to kills. MKLeo manages to fit in a couple of grabs and continues pressuring Kurama. Unfortunately, he whiffs a back air on Kurama's return to stage, leading him to getting grabbed. And once again, Mario's explosive combo game leads to a cutscene ending with a ladder kill confirm. While he was playing on borrowed time on that second stock, Kurama manages to two-stock MKLeo for a solid Game 1 win. Game 2 has a pretty vanilla first 10 seconds. There are several exchanges, and while MKLeo manages to win neutral a few times, Kurama aggressively weaves in his own hits. The game really blows up when Kurama catches a whiffed nair with a grab. From there, he confirms a down throw into a short hop rising up air, falling up air, into a rising forward air for a quick and easy spike, taking the first stock. Every neutral win for Mario can lead to massive damage, and Leo is quick to end Kurama's first stock. He catches him with the first hit of Joker's forward air, confirming into an up air wobble on the platform and a subsequent up smash for the kill confirm. From there, the game slows down, and after many neutral exchanges, Kurama finally takes Leo's next stock with a sneaky ledge trump into back air. Again, Leo wants to quickly end this stock, but after a missed tech chase, things get scary. He gets grabbed and put into a series of frame traps, nearly ending his stock at 37%. He's forced to air dodge and is again punished with a frame trap. This leads to a sequence of tech chases, and MKLeo is basically stuck in disadvantage for the rest of the game, finally ending when Kurama catches a roll away on the platform with up air, confirming into another up air, and down air. Then, there's game 3. Leo takes the initial lead, racking up some easy damage off of Aha and a grab. While it takes a little bit longer, Kurama does eventually get some neutral wins of his own. After some close neutral exchanges, he loses his second stock to an up smash out of shield. While Leo does take minimal damage, ending Kurama's second stock with a fair into up air, his time is nearly up. Almost immediately after respawning, Kurama finds the game-winning grab at 24%. He confirms a down throw into up air and frame traps with a second one. He dashes back, takes another grab, and this time confirms it into two up airs and a forward air spike to take the set off Leo in a huge 3-0 upset. This was insane. 
15 year old prodigy taking a set off of the best player in the world is big but 3-0 massive insane and there's no doubt the kid is a chad what i love about this set isn't just the games but the chaotic and hilarious aftermath sending leo into losers pretty much destroyed several other top players losers runs Leo took the tournament, by the way, and on his destructive path to victory, he took out Dark Wizzy, Samsora, Nairo, Zachary, DeBuzz, T, and Tweak in Losers. The next set we'll talk about was somewhat recent. Kagaribi 3 was a major held in Japan, bringing out several top players. Losers Semi-Finals was an incredible set to watch, as Aki Kikusu took his hero to new heights against Zachary, considered to be the best player in Japan. Starting with Game 1, Aki Kikusu pits his hero against Zachary's Wario. Off the rip, he notices Zachary isn't rushing him down, so he's free to just farm for power-ups and also fully charge his neutral special. Throughout the first stock, he waits for Zachary to approach him and appropriately punishes him for it. Slowly but surely, he asserts stage control and takes several small neutral wins to eventually take the first stock. While the rest of the game plays out rather uneventfully, you can see the beginnings of aggressive up specials that Aki Kikusu uses through this set. While insignificant in this moment, they play a major role in his win over the course of this five-game set. Over the course of Game 1, Aki Kikusu fishes for neutral wins, proceeding to play center stage and taking Zachary's second stock with a buffed up tilt. He plays similarly on the last stock, but actually wins the game because Zachary commits heavily to an up smash, misses, and gets punished by a buffed forward smash. Game 2 cuts ridiculously close. Aki Kikusu picks up an early lead, healthily holding two stocks while Zachary is on his last. Zachary plays immaculately for the next minute, taking minimal damage and taking a stock by confirming into dash attack off of down tilt. I mentioned crucial up specials, but let me tell you that this definitely wasn't one of them. Akikikusu attempts to out of shield punish Zachary with it, but heavily whiffs. This leads to an incredible string by Zachary as he picks up several consecutive up airs, but ends up misinputting his waft. The game draws closer and closer, and soon after, the players find themselves in a last hit scenario. Under pressure, Aki Kikusu uses the last of his mana, picking up Bounce and Zoom to recover back to stage. Unfortunately, he finds himself adjacent to Zachary, and in this terrifying situation, he goes for two jabs, doesn't commit to the third, but gets up smashed out of shield anyway, ending game two. While the loss wasn't ideal for Aki Kikusu, he at least got to pick his own stage, moving off of PS2 and taking it to town, giving him much more space to work with. Right from the start of Game 3, you can tell Aki Kikusu is much more comfortable on this stage. There's so much room for him to move, and he can easily take control of center stage and play his own game. After some jumping around, he manages to pick up the first stock with a random dash attack after a buff. On stock 2, Aki Kikusu begins conditioning Zachary with consecutive tomahawk grabs. He does lose his first stock to a 2 frame, however. The next part is Aki Kikusu ending Zachary's second stock. Eventually, he manages to pick up all the buffs he wants and lands a fully charged neutral special. Zachary gets a solid edge guard to even things up and gets a giant hit at 0. This leads to several confirms, and it looks like he's about to make a comeback. However, Aki Kikusu manages to jump out of the string and punish the overaggression with a powered up back air, bringing the set score to 2 1. The Wario isn't working out, so Zachary switches over to his Joker for game 4. Back to PS2 they go, and honestly, it's absolute destruction. Aki Kikusu struggles heavily, not only because the stage is smaller, but because Joker's rushdown applies much more pressure. You can see Zachary's confidence in the character, as he's able to get so much off a single grab. Unfortunately, under a ton of pressure, Aki Kikusu SDs his first stock. He does manage to get a good read in, and forward smashes Zachary to take a stock back. The unrelenting pressure is a lot for Aki Kikusu, however, and Zachary racks up a bunch of percent and finishes another stock with a deep edge guard. The pressure continues, and after several neutral wins, Zachary ends the game by reading a spot dodge and confirming a kill off a of first hit fair. 
Game score tied at 2-2. The two take their game five to town and city once again, Akikikusu's preferred stage for the extra space. Off the rip, he manages to land a neutral special and side special for a swift 47%. Zachary finds the grab he wants and starts a brutal combo, and a little bit later, Akikikusu breaks out of disadvantage with a fast up special. He quickly picks up Psych Up and catches a roll in the chaotic aftermath, leading to a quick up throw kill. He finds a Psych Up and patiently fishes for an opening while cornering Zachary. While he doesn't find a single hit through all of this, he manages to pick up the stock after a retreating platform saves his life from a confirm, and he lands a stray forward air a little bit later. With Zachary on his last stock, Akikikusu plays to get as much extra credit as possible, racking up 87% before losing his second stock to a back throw. With the stakes growing, Akikikusu continues to mix up his landings and patiently plays with all the free space he has. He camps the corner of the stage looking for buffs, but hits Zachary with one of the most hype mix-ups ever. Zachary is pressured to approach because he doesn't want to let Hiro continue searching for buffs, but anticipating this, Akikikusu steps back with a hatchet man, moving back Hiro's hurtbox enough for Zachary's neutral air to miss and ending the game with a hard, hard punish. This was one of the most hype ways to end a game. Not only did Akikikusu take the game against the best player in Japan, he did it with Hatchet Man of all moves. That covered, we have to throw in my favorite set. Maybe not in terms of gameplay, but it's my number one for a reason. This one hits the heart. It's a glorious moment, and simultaneously one of the most beautiful sets as well as biggest memes in Smash Ultimate's history. I'm talking about Nairo vs. Light at Collision 2019. So, what's so iconic about two top-level players taking each other on? Well, it's not the players. It's the characters. Game 1 ends with Nairo taking a decisive loss on Palutena, while Game 2 doesn't end much better. With his back to the wall, Nairo pulls out one of the most unexpected counterpicks ever. I'm talking about the career ender, the controversial master of sauce, dream crusher, wizard of evil. I'm talking about Ganondorf. This guy decides that at a major and near the end of his tournament run, he's about to pull out one of Ultimate's worst characters. You've got to love it. With game one and two out of the way, let me run you through where things get wild from game three. In order to win this set, Nairo needs to win three games in a row with a character who exhibits poor ground and airspeed, has no reliable out of shield options, and an atrocious disadvantage. His frame 10 neutral air isn't terrible, but considering its hitbox, it's far from being the most reliable punish. He has to do this against Fox, who has some ridiculous frame data, powerful combo game, and is also much faster than Ganondorf. Down a stock, Nairo does what he does best. He begins playing extremely aggressively. Light pushes his advantage off of a small neutral win and attempts to edgeguard Nairo, but gets hit by a rising up air and misses the tech. Shortly after respawning, Light does manage to get in a clean string of up airs, racking up heavy damage. However, Nairo continues with his hyper aggressive play and looks for some greedy getup options. After constantly trading, Nairo manages to take a pivotal trade, landing a forward air and taking Light's second stock. Over the next half a minute, Nairo continues to take trade after trade, racking up some damage while avoiding lethal hits himself. Finally, he manages to get Light off stage for a free down air edgeguard to take his first win. But the run doesn't end there. He goes on to work his magic in Game 4 as well. Game 4 begins in a similar fashion. Nairo takes a beating and finds his first opening with a grab that he's unable to confirm off of. In spite of losing neutral several times, Nairo plays aggressively, knocking Light off stage, and calls out his jump with a down special to score a disgustingly early kill with full rage. The game continues, and although Nairo does lose his first stock soon after, Light ends up SDing his second stock away, and the plot armor is really kicking in here. Racking up just a little bit of percent proves to be enough for Nairo as he lands a command grab on Light next to the ledge and ends the game by giving him the boot. Everything is leading up to Game 5, and the fiesta and chaos continues. 
Off to an aggressive start, Nairo gets close to ending Light's first stock early with a down air, but both players end up surviving by teching off Kalos' wall. Soon after, Light takes the first stock. Although it takes some time, Nairo manages to take Light's first stock with an unteckable back air off stage, but only after taking a rough beating of 88%. After some trades, Light again takes the lead, punishing a missed side special with an up smash, finishing Nairo's second stock. In spite of this huge lead, all it takes is a few neutral wins for Nairo to get back into the game as he edgeguards Light, moving on to last stock with only 7%. This is where the memes are made. Nairo has brought it down to last stock on a potential reverse sweep with Ganondorf. The following exchanges are tense. Fox takes several neutral wins, tacking on some decent damage, while Ganondorf hits him twice and suddenly Fox is near kill percent. Nairo eventually hits a dash attack and attempts to follow up with an up air. After whiffing the up air, he spot dodges, anticipating a landing aerial from light, and proceeds to throw out the ballsiest F smash imaginable. This is simply one of those things you don't question. Whether it's on purpose, whether it's a misinput, you don't question it, because the attack connects, and the knockback is enough for Nairo to proceed to ledge guard light twice. And Nairo gives him a deadly stomp to not only win the game, but deal some serious emotional damage. The match ends off of this, and Nairo has done the unthinkable, taking out another top player with one of the worst characters in the game. This set was a huge upset because, honestly, nobody thought it was possible. Everyone thought it was a meme, and that's exactly why it had to work. I don't question the will of the world, especially when it leads to content like this. That'll cover the biggest upsets in Smash Ultimate history. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and let me know what you thought. I'm sure there were many other huge upsets that you guys know about, so feel free to let me know which ones you thought should have made the list in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next video.